Welcome to the 2022 Unity Beginners course. This is episode 25 and I will talk about the player settings. So the player settings is where we configure the game application itself. It is more technical and the player settings tab can be accessed via the project settings. Now other than that it can also be opened via the build settings menu and at the bottom left corner you see player settings button here. Just click on that and it will bring up the player settings. Now at the top of the player settings you will see the company name, product name and version. Company name is the organization such as Rockstar Games or Electronic Arts or Gameloft. These are company names. For the product name, it is the name of the application that will appear on the final build, such as Grand Theft Auto, NBA 2K, or FIVA, these are called the product name. Now for the version, it depends on you, you can set it to anything you like, but generally we will use something like 1.0 or 1.1, or you may also use the Unity kind of versioning, such as 2021, dot two dot nine f one now the default icon here is the image that will appear on the final build it is the icon of the application itself and it can be set here we can also set the cursor of the application that means when the player plays the game then the cursor will be appeared in a different way and it can be defined here this option is more useful for desktop games. Down here you will see four options here. These options allows you to configure your application for different platforms. The first one is for desktop platforms like Windows and Mac. The second one is for dedicated servers. The third one is for Android devices and the final one is for WebGL. These options depend on the target platform that your project is configured. So now I will use Android as an example because it has the most options in my opinion. So in the first section here is called the icon. It is where you can set different icons for the application depending on the resolution and the size of the screen. But if you don't want to configure so much, you can use the default icon and it will be the same for all of the different sizes. The second section here is called the resolution and presentation. Now you will want to configure this section correctly or otherwise your application will be presented in a weird way. So the first option here is called the full screen mode. It is more useful for desktop devices to set whether the application is full screen or not. And also this option here allows you to configure whether the window is resizable. And down here we have the supported aspect ratio and usually we will use the default value of native aspect ratio. But you can also set it to a custom aspect ratio such as 2 to 1. Now, the important part is the orientation. If you work with mobile devices, it is important to set this up correctly. And there are four options. Portrait, Portrait upside down, landscape right, and landscape left. You can also go for auto rotation. But if you use auto rotation, make sure to configure the allowed orientations for auto rotation here. That is, if your game is landscape, you want to disable the portrait options. So the third section here is called the splash image. And a splash image is an image that will be shown when the user clicks open the application. Now, if you've played games made with Unity before, you're pretty familiar with the default made with Unity icon when you first open a game and that is called the splash image. Now other than that, we can also add our own logo or custom images into the splash image. 
So let's try to add a splash image. But before we do that, why not preview the splash image? So by clicking the preview button, we can preview our splash image and you can see the default made with Unity icon. And that is what a splash image looks like. Now here underneath this logos list, we can add a new item. And here we can select our own image sprite. And I've imported my own logo here and I can set the duration in seconds here. So I'll set it to maybe three seconds. So now let's preview once again, and you can see it looks kind of weird. So I'll modify it a little bit. Instead of drawing below the Unity logo, I'll click All Sequential for the draw mode. So this way it will sequentially render each logo. So let's try again. So it first comes like this and then our logo. But you can see the background is a bit weird, so I'll change that. So let's go for from dolly to static, and I can also set the background color here, and I'll set it to completely black, and let's preview again, and now it looks perfect. So here we have completed our own splash image. Okay, the fourth section is called the other settings. Now, this is a very long settings that will drive you crazy, and I'm not going to explain every each of them to you, but they are fully documented in the Unity scripting API, and as well as the Unity manual. So I will briefly go through them with you. The first one is called the color space, and this is an important option. And for many of the games, I would recommend to use the linear space because it looks much better for the lighting. But if your game does not require that much of rendering quality, or you want to improve the, imp the performance, you may also go back to Gamma. Now, for the graphics API, I will leave it as default usually, but there are cases that require you to use a specific graphics API and you will need to adjust it by yourself. Now underneath here there are so many optimization options and I recommend to have multi-threaded rendering and static batching enabled because these are great for performance. And for texture compression format, it is the way that the textures will be compressed. And I usually use ASTC or ETC2. Now I will leave it as default, but there are some cases, for example, in my past project, I've worked on the terrain, and the terrain texture is completely messed up because I used ASTC. So I had to revert to ETC2 instead. Now underneath here we have the minimum API level, and this one is the version of the platform that you're targeting for. For example, I'm not working on Android here, and usually I will just use the minimum, that is Android 5.1. But if your game uses some technologies that only exist in later versions, then you might need to adjust the minimum API level. Now for the scripting back end, I would recommend you to use IL2CPP because it improves the performance of your game as well as the code is harder to be reversed engineered. Now for the API compatibility level, usually I will go for .NET framework here. And below here we have incremental GC, it is a great feature that prevents the garbage collector from blocking your game from running smoothly. And also underneath here we have more options such as requiring internet access and also the rights permission to be either internal or external. And below here at the optimization part we have some more optimization options, such as pre-baked collision meshes, 
or we can keep the loaded shaders alive, these are for better performance. And finally, we arrived at the publishing settings. Now this section is about configuring your game to be published on platforms like Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Now as a beginner, I doubt you will use it right now, so I'm not going to introduce it in the course. But there are so many resources out there that will guide you to publish your game. And that is basically all about the player settings. It is important to keep the information such as the company name, the product name, version, and the icons correct once you have designed your game. And that is the end of today's lesson. This is episode 25 of the 2022 Unity Beginners Course. I am Yellow Flicker and I will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned!